Welcome, everyone. I can look around, I'm looking around the room, and it's a pretty interesting demographic, but I, I know there's a few of us here that remember paper maps. When you pull over the road and you forget where you're at, and you got mom and dad arguing, where are we going, where are we going? Mom, you forgot to tell me I was supposed to turn off here. We've all been through that. It was horrible. How do we get from A to B? The moment that a map is printed, it's basically obsolete. I mean, that's the principle, right? We keep on going, we keep discovering, and then we have routes that change, and we have new roads, and we have construction, and we have traffic. Today, this is mostly resolved because we can collect all that data in real time and apply it to our course of action. And so we have our handheld maybe when we're walking, or we have our on, on computer in our car, and we, even in our boats, planes, there's no plane that will, that will fly today without this kind of support, right? So what, we're, what we've gone from is this paper map to something where all of our information is readily available in our hands. So how are we doing in healthcare? The most part, we kind of just are scratching the surface. We go to the doctor when we feel sick, and often when we go to the doctor and we're feeling sick, it's late. And the doctor, they've got terrific training, there's no doubt about it. They try to apply their best practices to you in a trial and error format. Did they get it right? Well, we'll find out. You'll find out because often you have to go back, and that's how they know if they got it right or not, or you don't feel well. So how do we, how do we navigate this course of our healthcare to, to achieve those things that we want to achieve? And in, now in this world, we've, we've entered in this brand new um, science of health, if you like. And so there's, there's four basic principles I want you to become familiar with to begin with. And the first one is genomics. So you, you, your genome is that entire genetic makeup that makes you you. That's your code that starts you from a single cell organism and start switching off and on genes as the cells differentiate into muscle cells, nerve cells, start to produce bone, lay down teeth, all these wonderful things that makes you, you. But it's not everything, right? It doesn't, we know that if you're, there's some interruption in your, in, uh, maybe you're exposed to some sort of uh, nasty teratogen, and you can have some sort of change in your anatomy that can be horrifying and, and be quite debilitating. And that's because your genes interact with the environment. There's this interaction, there's this interface. But how do we monitor that? So we've, we've entered into another omics where we start to look into the larger other parts of us that are also reporting on how we're doing. So if we take the metabolome or metabolomics, this is looking at all those little m small molecules like lipids, fats, sugars, um, things, that you, things familiar to like cholesterol that really tell us how our body's performing here and now. And the proteins that are floating around in the body that we take as a whole, we call the proteome, or proteomics. It's the study of the proteome. And they tell us the, the proteome, and, it, and, and you know, it's funny, when you say protein to most people, they go, oh, a steak. Well, your, your, your body is made up of steak pieces, right? That's the muscle. But you've got all these other proteins that are super important to kind of making the engine run, helping, you know, those, those, to produce those metabolites that help you feed, that turn, turn sugar fats into energy and, and help store things. They, they play all these amazing roles. So we need to understand what they're doing as well. And then there's this amazing emerging um, science we call the microbiome or microbiomics. And, and this covers all of those little tiny microbes that live in and on you. It sounds a little creepy, but you carry around, depending on your size, two to four kilograms of these small animals that we call microbes, yeast, bacteria. And you can imagine they have a huge influence on your health and your well-being. And so we're starting to understand the associations of those microbes on your health and well-being. Recently, there was a study done out of, out of Vancouver that demonstrated that at three months of age, just by examining the gut microbiome, we can determine whether children are going to be asthmatic or not. We're finding that, that certain species of bacteria are hugely influential on inflammatory bowel diseases and other um, autoimmune diseases. So it's a hugely important thing, and, and, and in fact, it's a growing concern in our world today because we've been using antibiotics so freely, we're killing off a lot of the good stuff and we're losing our diversity. We've done this great job of bringing down 
infectious disease, but now we're introducing new problems like these chronic autoimmune diseases. So just to remind you, the genomics tells us about what you're susceptible to. So it, it kind of tells us what could happen. Think of it as the photograph. And then the metabolomics, the microbiomics, are all, and the proteomics are all dynamic. They all, they're all sort of telling what's going on now. What's, they're, they're the, they're the real-time reporters, like the movie as you're watching it. So what can we do about this? So we're born with this, this genetic makeup, and, and this is pretty much how we start, but how do we go, what are those things in our lives that influence us, that make us be who we are? And, and if we are in a certain way now, how do we navigate it so the way that we can actually alter the course? So this is the challenge that we all face, because we all want to be better, we all want to be healthier, but how do we do it? We all have a unique fingerprint, or blueprint, if you like, that, that kind of encodes for us. Look, look around the room. I have, I have a son and a daughter. They are probably the most two genetically alike people that they, on Earth, to themselves, but they're as different as night and day. I mean, I'm sure you're very different from your sibling, but you share that genetic code from your mom and the genetic code from your dad, and you basically have almost the identical genetic code, like twins, right? And yet, we're all very, very different. Yet, when we go to the doctor, they pretty much treat us the same. I mean, I, I, my, my wife is much smaller than I am, but I'll go in with a, with a similar ailment, and they will actually give me the same medication that they would her, probably the same dose. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And what we're learning through the, the ages is that the medications that we're giving to people are only about 50% active on the people that they're prescribed to. And, and the really frightening thing about it, even though we work so hard to make our medications as safe as possible for everybody, sometimes we have these adverse drug reactions, and sometimes they result in death. And you would be surprised to know the sixth leading cause of death in the United States alone is an adverse drug reaction to a prescribed drug. Not to fentanyl on the streets, but to a prescribed drug. And we spend over $100 billion a year in North America treating adverse drug reactions. This is, a, this is a problem. So we, we started a, a program where, and, and a project that we just recently com, uh, completed where we sampled a, about 200 people and we looked at just 33 variants in their, in their gene, genome that helped us understand how they respond to medications. And we were looking at the most common diseases known. You know, the most, the, I should say the most common reasons you go to visit your doctor. And 97% of the people that were tested actually had a variant that would either change the medication or change the dose. 97%. That's basically everybody. And yet, when we go to that doctor, when we take that medication, we have no idea if that we're one of the people carrying that variant that could actually result in an adverse drug reaction and potentially into a death. But I don't want to give you the, the sense that your, your, your fate is wrapped up in your genetic code. Yes, it got you to where you are at birth, but then all those other influences became very important, right? So let's, let's move away from that concept. It's true, we do need to understand genetics to get an idea of what's going on. But when we start to add in the proteomics, and then we add in the microbiome, and we start to understand how that immediate environment is working with us, and then we add in the meta metabolomics, we have this crystal clear picture of who we are and what's going on. So this is this sort of your molecular self, if you like. So our genes are a template for the environment to act upon. So don't be afraid of your genetics. Don't believe that your fate is written in your genetic code. So why are we talking about this today? Well, when I started, I'm not going to tell you when, but many years ago, um, and, and I, I think um, we talked about the Human Genome Project. It, this, this completed about 12 years ago. It cost us, uh, I actually think it's more like $10 billion. The image you see here are these sequencing machines that sequence genetic code. It took us 13 years to, to assemble all that information, which is about a terabyte of information. And it took about 12 places around the world to combine all that information together. And in fact, when we started, we, did, we thought it was an impossible task. Today, <laughs> we can do this in a day. 
we can sequence your entire genome in a day for under a thousand dollars. So now we have all of this information about you, potentially, right? That, that baseline. And beyond that, now we can look at the metabolome, but we can apply this genetic, this genetic technology to our microbiome. That's really how we can, we can get down to understanding the microbiome. Before, uh, we had to culture them and watch them, and, and we wouldn't even get the, the really tiny ones that weren't there or wouldn't grow well in the culture. So now we can just sequence them. And we can do that in a day. And, and, and we can look at your metabolome and your proteome. It takes 20 seconds to run it on a mass spectrometer. And we need nanoliters of material. So we're, we're entering into this, this where technology is enabling us to do things that were never, ever possible before. But it creates its own issues. Now we've got this immense amount of data that we have to wade through, right? And it's diverse data, it's complicated data. How do we, how do we compare your proteome to your metabolome to the way you eat, work, shop, all those other things? Google showed us how to do it, right? Amazon, Amazon, if you shop on Amazon, they've already shipped your next book to you. They know what you're gonna read, right? Big data analysis, but why aren't we applying that to our health? And that's what we're doing. We're taking all that information, we're applying it to our health. This becomes a big data problem. And with, the, this, with our information doubling every 1.3 years currently, in fact, it's supposed to be in two years we'll be doubling that information every eight months. Can you imagine? Doubling every eight months. How do we keep up? And, and how come that information is being applied to us? So that's, that's what we're about, taking all that fantastic information about you and applying it to all the new information that's emerging around the world. And we do this by collecting your genetics, your proteome, your metabolome, and your microbiome. And we can look at these things over time. Maybe you only want to look at it once a year. Maybe you want to look at it every three months if you're trying to manage an illness. Or maybe, you know, you've got some big thing that's come up. You want to know exactly what's going on. You want to look at yourself on a, on a very frequent basis to really see what those changes are doing, right? So then what we do is we apply that information to your body. And we, we make it possible to identify, well, where, where are the areas of greatest interest that we need to work with to make you a better you? Where, where, where is the area that we need to focus on to, to really help you achieve those goals that you want to achieve? Or if you're, if you're not well, why, why aren't you well? And is it really where you think it is? Is it somewhere else? We can, we can take this systems approach to, to uh, health and really understand who you are on a molecular level. So we do these visualizations in, in multitude of ways. And this is just to give you a con an idea of the complexities of, of the interactions that can occur. Now, so we identify that there's an issue perhaps in the heart. So there's this potential for heart disease. All right. But when we look at the metabol or the analyte that in this case that is involved, what else is it involved in? Well, it's lighting up in, in other parts of the body. So even though an one analyte may be highly important for one uh, system, it can be important for other systems. So we have to manage that very carefully. And so we have to take all this information. Now, that, now your, your head's going, oh my God, how, this is way too much information. How can I actually use this? And that, that's what we're about. We're about bringing all that information, putting it down, distilling it down, so that you can sit down with your practitioner, maybe a physician, maybe a coach, and go through and build an action plan. So we look at those areas that are of key importance, and we, we take, select options that are most important for you to become uh, uh, better for you. This is individualized. This isn't going back to the, okay, everybody exercise, everybody diet, everybody do this. We all know it's good for us, right? Why don't we all do it? Because it doesn't work for me. Like, what, what, it, it's not helping me. It, that, that drug is making me feel bad. That food makes me gag. I mean, I need something for me. I need the exercise that helps me. And so this is what we have to move towards, and this is what molecular U is really about. Now is the time for us to take control of our health at a molecular level and be the best that we can be. Thank you very much for listening.